Coding. Made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next debugging with Visual Studio tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be learning even more about breakpoints but it gets even cooler as my tutorials usually do you know anyways um in this tutorial uh well first first of all what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say um gonna do a loop from zero to for loop from zero to 100 and and all we're gonna do is a uh, console right line um, I'm just gonna just print out I like so we know what's gonna go on we know there's nothing wrong gonna happen uh, in our program but let's just say that we wanted um, uh, we, we wanted to something a lot was going on within our for loop and we wanted to see if something happened at iteration number 85 right so there's multiple ways we could go about it we could put a breakpoint here and we could start and we could do this 85 different times or so on and so forth until we get i equal to 85 right but common sense would say to put an if statement and say if i is equal to 85 then do something so that would be the common sense way but in the last tutorial I mentioned that uh, whenever I wanted to do uh, like if I wanted to check the return value of a method I all I had to do was just check the autos at the bottom I didn't need to um, store it in the actual variable and it's the same thing with here with breakpoints if you want to stop your program at a particular moment in time in order to uh, check something then with breakpoints we can do that so with breakpoint with breakpoints we've just been stopping at a particular point and uh, like uh, always triggering at a particular point. If we right click, we can see there's a whole bunch of other options. So let's click on con click on condition. So on condition, we can execute this breakpoint on a certain condition. So we're just gonna say i is equal to um, to 85. And we select if it's true. So we're just going to do start, and as you can see it iterated uh, 84 times on the 85th, or sorry, when yeah, when I was equal to 85, then the breakpoint actually executed. And you could look at this. You can see that the breakpoint has a plus to let you know that it has the actual condition inside of it. And if we check the condition, we can check to see if a variable has changed. Uh, so we can put a variable inside there. For example. Uh, let's just put int uh, j and we're just going to say um, if i is equal to 85, uh, j is equal to 10. And let's move this breakpoint. Uh, let's put this to do that. So we're just going to say changed and we're just going to put j. So we're going to check if j has changed. And if j has changed, we're going to trigger it. And as we can see, right here just like before was which is 85 j has indeed changed so since j has changed it triggers this breakpoint so let's check out some other stuff we can do with this uh, so let's just get rid of this condition and stop this from executing um, so we can say we can look at hit count so uh, by default it's set to break always so when it's hit it will always break but we can set to see uh, if a certain hit count is reached or if it's a hit count is greater than or equal to something or if it's a multiple of something uh, so we can say the hit count is when the uh, the breakpoint is always hit so we can say if the breakpoint um, the hit count is equal to 85 and let's just get rid of this oh got in my breakpoint so hit count is equal to 85 then when we hit 85 because it's gonna be it's gonna hit this 85 times uh, then we're actually gonna run our breakpoint so this is the 85th time this was actually hit and if we go to hit count we can see this was hit 85 times okay um, and then we can reset it and do certain things with it. So you have certain criteria. So if we want to say if it's a multiple two of two, every single time i is a multiple of two, then it will execute, it will trigger that breakpoint. 
So let's continue to, um, let's see, one hit. So we can print a message uh, to the output console um, when something's hit and it tells you uh, what certain things will get replaced um, uh, when uh, you put that in. So the function will get replaced with the function name. Uh, TID will get uh, will, will be replaced with the thread ID and this will be replaced with the thread name. Um, and then you can say continue execution. So it doesn't actually break and as you can see it changes it to a diamond. Uh, so if we click that and we say continue execution, uh, let's see, uh, go to that, you know what, let's do break always, and uh, that was stupid, um, we're not going to continue execution, we're going to do that, and as you can see, we have a break, and as you can see, it printed out our output right there. So if you want to print out some output whenever uh, something uh, debug uh, uh, a breakpoint, sorry, has hit, then you can do that as well. So let's check out some other stuff that we can do. We can um, let's get rid of this. So we can. Uh, go to edit labels and we can give a label to this we can just say main breakpoint or just say main break and we can add um, we can add another one to a label or choose an existing label and if we go to breakpoint at the bottom um, on the bottom tab and if you don't have that just go to the debug drop down and just let me move this up so you can see debug windows and breakpoints so in this breakpoint tab right here, we can um, get rid of that, and we can see all our um, our breakpoints here, and we can see our labels. Uh, so we can um, search, we can say main break, and we can filter them out like that. And if we want, then we can disable all of those with a certain condition if we want to. So if we don't want that. Um, certain if we don't we can label them and then if we don't need them in a certain um, for certain tests we can disable them all and so it makes it easier for us to uh, disable a lot of breakpoints instead of having to disable them individually or disabling all of them uh, so with breakpoints we can also if we uh, say for example we figured out a problem but we suspect that we may need these breakpoints again or uh, we have a large code base and there's something a breakpoint that triggers something hidden deep inside a file um, like I, I remember I was working uh, with something at work and there was something like super that was called the deep um, uh, in the program and so uh, what you can do is you can save a breakpoint if you don't need it right now you can either disable it or you can export it and then when you need it again you can import it and it's good if for example if you're sending your code to somebody and you want to send a, a breakpoint file and they can import the breakpoints and it would trigger the breakpoints where you set them so in order to do this we can click the export uh, that um, matches criteria and I already saved one so test XML and let's delete these just to show us importing it and we click import breakpoints from file and voila we got them back okay so last but not least uh, we have the filter and the filter allows you to uh, sort of determine when the breakpoint hits based on like if you wanted to hit on a different thread or something if you have a multi-threaded program so um, if you have two threads run, running at once, you don't want it to hit on that one thread, you want it to hit on the next thread, then the filter will be uh, more valuable, um, it will be valuable to you. Um, so we will have more on this, I'll have an example with this in a later tutorial. But I hope you enjoyed this, don't forget to comment and subscribe, don't forget to uh, uh, comment and subscribe, and yeah, <laughs> and bye for now.